Thank you, Madam Chairwoman uh, and Congressman Platts, uh, members of the committee. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify before you today uh, on today's hearing on childhood obesity. Our schools have a very powerful impact on the way our children eat and the lessons they learn about healthy living. With uh, WIC and child nutrition programs set to be reauthorized this year, we have an opportunity to actually take bold steps to reverse these dangerous trends. I commend uh, the subcommittee for holding this important hearing, and I commend you for your continued attention to the health and well-being of our nation's children. Children spend more than a third of their young lives at school, including before and after school, and oftentimes holidays as well. So it's important that schools provide healthy foods throughout the entire school day. Unfortunately, Current nutrition standards for food sold at school, but outside of the school meal programs, are inconsistent and they are often unhealthy. For example, donuts are allowed in vending machines, but lollipops are not. Cookies are fine, but breath mints are banned. These standards don't make any sense. They haven't been updated since my children were in school in the 1970s. And today, my grandchildren who are in school are faced with the same junk, junk food uh, choices that uh, should have been replaced years and years ago. No wonder, Madam Chairwoman, that child obesity is becoming an epidemic. Today, 23 million children and adolescents are obese or overweight. Obesity rates for children between 6 and 11 years old have more than quadrupled over the last 40 years. Throughout their lives, these children are at greater risk for heart disease, type 2 diabetes, stroke, cancer, and social and psychological problems. That's why I've reintroduced HR 1324, the Child Nutrition Promotion and School Lunch Protection Act, which will ensure that all foods sold in schools during the entire school day are based on current scientific and sound nutrition standards. In the Senate Democrat, uh, Senator uh, Tom Harkins and Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski have introduced the companion to this bipartisan bill in the House. Uh, and this bill has been endorsed by more than 80 organizations, including a wide range of school health and nutrition advocacy groups. While critics might expect that schools that switch to selling healthier foods might lose money, it turns out to be just the opposite. According to a study conducted by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Center for De Disease Control, the majority of schools switching to healthier competitive foods in their vending machines and a la carte lines actually increased their revenues. The Center for Weight and Health at UC Berkeley in 2007 also found that 65 percent of schools that had total revenue that provided these better uh, meals and better choices uh, had total revenue increases of more than 5% after switching and providing then schools uh, with uh, improved nutrition standards that in, and uh, also increased their revenues. H.R. 1324 would require that nutrition standards for foods sold in vending machines and a la carte lines meet standards for calorie caloric intake, saturated fats, trans fats, and refined sugars. The bill would depend on leading scientific experts to make recommended uh, uh, recommendations and would study the relationship between certain foods and obesity. Additionally, while H.R. 1324 would set strong nationwide minimum standards, states could go above and beyond those standards. It's obviously long past time to bring these schools, Madam Chairwoman, uh, into the 21st century. Unless Congress updates these standards, students will continue to spend money on unhealthy options that undermine their health and their futures. So I look forward to working with the committee to get these changes signed into law. And again, Madam Chairwoman, thank you very much for having me today.